Hi guys, so um, today I wanted to, to go live. Why is my camera so weird? <laughs> anyway, so today I wanted to go live and talk about a couple things. First of all, um, <laughs> all I have to say about the Kavanaugh situation is, bitch, why'd you waste all of our motherfucking tax dollars? Like, all the American people's tax dollars, bitch. Like, you should have used all of our tax dollars. To do another investigation on this motherfucker when you just had a sixth one already conducted and well now there's seven of them and you still found out he's innocent so why are you so mad i mean i'm more mad about the fact that our fucking tax dollars was used to pay for these investigations and we pay the government to do stuff like this and what we're paying for right now is a sham of an investigation and um that was from the Democratic mouth, by the way. The Democrats called it a sham, not me. Um, and um, I think it's crazy. Um, it wasn't the Republicans actually called it a sham. It was a Democrat who called it a sham. And so... What? No, I was talking about somebody else who called it... So that's my boyfriend in the background trying to chime in, trying to be like part of things, you know? But um, so um, anyway, so this is what I have to say about all of this is going on. Ha! That's all I can say. Is I told you so. I mean, I told you so is something that we can't even talk about anymore. So I made a post and um, I wanted to read that post to you guys and see what you guys thought about it. So my post reads as so. I said, if these are really valid points that I am making. So I said, if you support Dr. Ford and women who are victims of sexual assault, then I assume that you feel bad for voting for Hillary Clinton. She silenced, pays for, and according to a police report, even assaulted women who have evidence against her serial rapist husband, who's way worse than Kavanaugh, way worse than that guy in the 90s who had um, suspicion, people suspected it against him, way worse than any other sexual assault, assaultee, what you call it? Uh, if you will, assaultee that's in our um, politics. Anyway, so I said, um, if you still feel good about supporting um, Dr. Ford and voting for Hillary Clinton, then I will also assume that you're one of the ones who don't give a fuck about the 50 plus real victims of rape and assault that were arrested outside of the Kavanaugh hearing for protesting. One of those people being a comedian, Amy Schumer. Now, um, the only thing I have to say about that part of it is this. You guys all say you're for victims and you guys are for all the women across America. It's bullshit. Stop saying that because you guys got these women all up in their feelings. You guys got a lot of women who are real victims to real rape cases and real assault cases to revisit these memories that some of them have suppressed, some of them have worked through with counselors, some of them have taken medication, some of them have done whatever it takes in their life to not forget it, but to live past it. And you guys have brought that up to a lot of women. Now, there's a lot of people in America, believe it or not. So that being said, how many of these women have relapsed on drugs? How many of these women have um, done things like, oh, I don't know, killed themselves? Because they revisited these nasty, scary, 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 horrible memories they had of being raped and assaulted. How many people did you guys get in their feelings? A lot. So why, when some of these women who are all up in their fucking feelings, including Amy Schumer, why when they're in front of the Kavanaugh hearing courthouse, when they're getting arrested by the dozens, Friday alone was 50 of them. And now I'm hearing that it was almost 100 to 100 arrests or something like that altogether, which is not the exact number, but rounding it off. Anyways, point is, is that, think about it. These Democratic leaders are sitting on those benches, looking at Ford, saying, knowing cameras are on them, saying, we support all women like Ford. As right behind them outside those doors, 50 of them on Friday alone got fucking arrested because they were all up in their feelings, remembering memories that were real. They could recall the time, the day, the age, the, they could record the year. They could recall all of that. And these women who can recall all those memories were revisiting them. So they were really upset. Why? Because they thought they were standing behind a movement that meant that they can turn their sexual assault case into something that could be strength for others and strength for themselves and strength for the whole entire women race? Women gender? What do you say nowadays? Uh, whatever. For women, okay? But here's the motherfucking thing. Y'all are going to let them get arrested because they're so all up in their feelings. They're out there trying to protest all crazily. And you guys sit down and do nothing about it. And you're going to sit there at the same time as people are getting arrested behind your fucking Democratic asses. 
the fucking bitch that's right there sitting in front of you, you're like, oh, we stand up for all women because of her. No, 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 no. You stand up for one woman and it's Dr. Ford. And the only reason why you, you don't even stand up for the other people who came forward, you only stand up for Dr. Ford because of the fact that she's your ticket into the house. Because you think that if you stop a Republican from being up in there, you get your house back. But why don't you just be real about your shit? I told you that since the beginning. I'd have more respect for you if you simply was like, I'm Democrat. I don't want a Republican in the seat. I would understand that. I would agree with that. I would say, okay, you're Democrat. You don't want a Republican up in the seat. Cool, cute. But because of the fact, hi, but because of the fact that you're going to go and sit there and say, first of all, that you're going to go and use lies in order to get, um, to try to get the seat and play dirty like a rural Democrat does, it's really funny to me that you guys will use your own people as ammo. For you guys to get people all up in their emotions across America who support you is disgusting. So I'll tell you something about the Republican Party. They don't ever, they don't ever, they don't ever pry on us when we are down. They do not kick us when we're down. They do not pry on our weaknesses. That's the Democratic Party. And the sad part about it is the Democratic Party only hates one other group more than they hate the right. And it's themselves. They did it with Muslims. They did it with black people. They did it with women. They did it with children. Every time y'all see somebody in your party that's down and out, you kick them. But not only kick them, you kick them like a fucking soccer ball towards us as if we're a goalie. It makes no sense. The sad part about it is these people support you, Democrats. Those women outside that um, fucking Kavanaugh hearing job interview, okay, these people that are sitting outside of it they, that were getting arrested, they support you. They voted for you. Why would you ignore them when they're going to jail? Did you bail them out? Most Democrats, let's be real, they're Democrats. They probably don't have money. <laughs> now, I'm not judging, I'm just saying. But like, in, a, in a real sense of it, in a real fucking sense of it all, why did people like Camilla Harris, why did Feinstein, why were you guys so silent? You guys are four women. Corey, hello, any of you? They all stay silent when they watch fucking over 100 people get arrested outside of the Kavanaugh hearing protesting because they were told to protest because of the fucking Democratic fucking people. I'm a little pissed off about it, yeah. I'm a little jaded about that because why? Because I used to be Democrat and um, I will tell you my experience. I was used as a fucking pawn as well. You use my community as well, my gay community. You use us as pawns. You get us all up in our feelings. You make us think everybody hates us. You make us feel like victims and then you use us as ammo against the Republican Party. Now, I've got really involved with both parties in my lifetime. And I can tell you what I've seen, and what I've seen is this. There's a small percentage of the Republican Party that is assholes and idiots. And they are the right of the right, and they're so, their heads are so far up their asses they can't fucking see straight. And most of them are religious-based Republicans. That's not what an American Republican is. But I used to think it was equal. I used to think, well, the left of the left is stupid, and so is the right of the right. We need some common ground, guys. But now let's talk about numbers and majorities. I'm finding that at this point, the majority, over 50% of Democrats, seem to be a little bit unhinged, seem to be a little bit threatening, seem to be a little bit violent, seem to be a little bit pissed off. Trust me, Republicans were not happy when Obama won twice, but we didn't do this. And when we didn't want a Democrat in the seat, we were honest, we told you, we're Republican, we don't want a Democrat in the seat. Have more respect. And that's what we want from you. But I don't see that in the cards. I used to be a big supporter of differences and say, we need to get along, we need to come together. And I still will say that, and I still have a slither of like, of like a feeling of like that can happen, or, like, or that's a possibility. A very slight sliver. And that sliver is closing every single day. The Republicans are so mad that we had to be made out to be rapists, we had to be made out to be fucking racist, we had to be made out to be homophobic, when none of us are those things. There are some, I get it, there's some idiot Americans, welcome to America. But the majority of the party is beautiful, great, and it was easier for me to come out as gay to the Republican Party than it was to come out as gay to the Democratic Party. I know that sounds weird, but when I came out as gay to the Democratic Party, they were like, yes, we support you, but everybody had their own idea of what kind of gay they wanted me to be. And they were really upset when I was not that kind of gay which they still are, because I'm a Republican. So they don't support me. I'm not welcome at Pride, I'm not welcome anywhere. So I'm not even allowed to be prideful to be gay to them. But um, in the Republican Party, I've got a lot of this. 
Ugh. And then they're like, they listen to what I'm saying. They're like, you know what? You say some truth, gay boy. And I have a lot of people even message me and say, you know what? I never supported gay people until I, I've listened to you. And I thought that all gay people were far on the left. And I thought that they were all um, part of that agenda. When they realize that we're not, their eyes come open. And they're willing to learn. They're willing to accept. And they're willing to, to talk about differences and, and make amends. I've made so many really right-winged people come over to me and tell me things like they support me now for being gay. They don't think of gay people the same anymore. And that's what we need. That's the progress we need. That's what's called progress. I don't expect to show up at a Republican party and everybody just love me. No, I don't. I'm not going to be surprised if they don't. But I will do what it takes to be myself and just change minds by simply being myself and showing them that I'm human. And it's working. I'm finding that when I was a Democrat, though, I'd want to yell. I'd want to say, fuck you. I'd want to threaten. I'd want to, I'd want to get all my friends together and scream about it. Because there's strength in numbers. But to get any of those Democrats by themselves, they wouldn't be doing that. Because mob mentality is also a real thing. Mob mentality has definitely taken over a lot of these aspects of what's going on today. But back to the thing at hand, I want to talk about how the fucking seventh investigation came up empty handed. Hmm. You would think six times you investigate Kavanaugh, you might not want to pay with our money a seventh. But our tax dollars were on another week of investigations and I hope all of you are happy at home. And all of you Democrats are pissed off. Here's a video I want to show you guys that just expresses the um, amount of stupidity that's going on in your party. And I wanted to show you guys firsthand what you guys look like to the rest of us. And not to the rest of us, to your own party, because there's so many people not just doing the walk away movement. There's simply people who are saying, oh my God, I can't believe I'm Democrat. Like, you're doing things that are outlandishly embarrassing at this point. Other than just ignoring all the women that were arrested outside the Kavanaugh hearing that you ignored, but you stick up for all victims and all women, whatever. Let's watch this video. I love this bitch so much. She's great. And you guys just keep moving the goalposts. So here's what I mean. Alexa, turn the volume up to number 10. Independently Republican. A sex crimes prosecutor. She puts sexual miscreants behind bars. So she does for a living. By the way, Republicans were idiots who came to that politically correct bullying from the left. As if being white, Republican, and male somehow convicts you of a crime. Amen. Or makes you unfit to talk about sexual abuse. So maybe the Republicans brought this on themselves when the Democrats said, Oh, you hired a woman? That's sexist to make a woman do your dirty work. Then the Democrats said, Actually, now we demand an FBI investigation. If Kavanaugh's innocent, he would have demanded an FBI investigation himself. Well, stupid Jeff Flake made this happen, so now we have an FBI investigation. You think the Democrats would be happy, right? Nope. Well, if you think that, you haven't been paying attention. <laughs> the Democrats said, this FBI investigation isn't deep enough or long enough. It's not good enough. Senator Feinstein said, before the FBI investigation was even finished, she said, you public, you American people, you can't even see the results of the FBI background check anyway. It's just for us. And Democratic Senator Cory Booker says, it doesn't matter if Kavanaugh's guilty or innocent. Let's ditch him either way because he's awful. The same party that claps for Cory, Spartacus Booker, who, by the way, once groped a woman and screamed unprofessionally at Secretary of Homeland Security Kirsten Nielsen, also a woman. This same Democratic Party that says it's okay to punch Republicans because all Republicans are Nazis. <laughs> says Kavanaugh got angry in his testimony in the Senate. How unseemly, the Democrats said. Kavanaugh doesn't have the temperament to be a Supreme Court justice. Yes, how dare a man get angry when he's falsely accused of rape. 
Amen. Remember, the Democrats called Senator Ted Kennedy, who actually killed a woman. He left her to drown in his car while he ran away. Ted Kennedy is a lion of the Senate, according to the left. But in 1985, when Kavanaugh threw an ice cube at some dude in a bar, Democratic Senator Maisie Hirano says, well, this is why we need an FBI investigation. Yeah, Senator, you might say this one's a real cold case. Did you ever pass out from alcohol, the Democrats demanded of Kavanaugh next, moving the goalposts again. Always. Oh, Kavanaugh said, did you? Gasp, the Democrats said how utterly disrespectful of Kavanaugh to ask senators the same question they asked him. <laughs> Passing out from alcohol disqualifies Kavanaugh from the Supreme Court, according to the left. He says he never did anyway. This is Ruth Bader Ginsburg passed out at Obama's 2015 State of the Union address. Just saying, bitch. Drunk. So let's follow this path. The Democrats have moved the goalposts from listen to the woman, to a hearing in the Senate, to an FBI investigation, to Kavanaugh getting angry, to temperament, to drinking, to throwing an ice cube at a dude in a bar. And this is why Donald Trump won. Amen. Because we, the American people, we don't want these Democratic clowns in charge of law and justice because they are just a bunch of political hacks. And that is my final point. You can reach me on Twitter at Liz underscore Wheeler. If you like the show, please send me an email. I love the show, Liz. Shut the fuck up, though, because I'm talking now. In the meantime, catch us here tomorrow at 9... So um, that was pretty interesting to listen to because in the end she said it the best. I think I, I love her show because she's really straightforward. And I know if you're a Democrat and you have a bunch of feelings that you're trying to be all up in, you probably won't like her because she's really straightforward and very blunt. But she also is not, um, she's unbiased. She doesn't really pick sides. Although she does point out what's going on. And right now you would think that she's super, super, super Republican, which she's listed as Republican. But it's only because the left is making it so easy. You guys are making it easy. So if you are on the left and you saw that video just now, how do you feel about that? I'm curious. How do you feel about the fact that no matter what you fucking are asking of Kavanaugh and they're saying, okay, 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 and they keep doing it for you, how do you feel about the fact that your senators are still not happy? They're not happy because they know that they cannot, like, win this game that they're trying to play. Is it a game? I don't know what they're trying to do, but all I know is that it's very, 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 very um, childish. It's very um, crazy. And 2016 is never coming back. It's never fucking coming back. So stop with the 2016 bullshit. Get over the fact that he's your president. And it, it's funny because if you think that he's not your president, I bet you got a phone call when we all did, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, you got that presidential phone call, bitch, because he's your president. But um, anyways, back to the situation at hand. I think that the Kavanaugh situation is really crazy. I think he should have been fucking Supreme Court justice a long time ago. We should have already voted on this. This is retarded that's being drug out this fucking far. Like, what the fuck's going on? But it got drug out because the Democrats wanted to postpone, 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 postpone. But you all dug your own fucking graves. Because now what you did before, instead of postponing this until after midterms, what you did was look stupid until midterms. Now you made your own party look stupid. The hundreds of people that were arrested outside the Kavanaugh hearing that you guys did not give a fuck about that are victims of real sex and real um, fucking real violent crimes that got all up in their feelings because of you and got arrested and taken to jail. The ones that, you know, those ones who didn't bail out, the ones you didn't talk about, but you're sitting there saying you're sick of for all women when you're pointing out forward. Yeah, those women. So I'm saying you made all of those people go against you. If you wanted to win the midterms, Going about this in such a dirty way probably wasn't the best thing to do. Whatever happened to having a little bit of, um, I don't know, um, pride, a little bit of um, decency, a little bit of um, feelings of bad when you do something like hypocritical or, or lie? Whatever happened to those things? And the funny part about it is what, nobody even wanted to talk about the fact that Dr. fucking whatever her, Dr. Ford, she is somewhat a victim in this as well. But she let it happen. And they picked somebody like Dr. Ford. Why? Because she's a psychologist. Somebody who knows how to get into people's heads. Somebody knows how it is to work with one of the victims. So she knows how to become a victim. But she failed at her own game. She didn't fucking even pass her own game. The Democrats wanted us to get um, a prosecutor in there to see if this was even criminal worthy. And it's not. The prosecutor they brought in is a woman, like you guys liked. And it's somebody who has put away a lot of criminals for sexual misconduct. And she even said, if you brought this to my desk, I would not even be able to use it. So you guys said, we need an FBI investigation. Did you not just fucking hear her? <laughs> like, <laughs> the fuck? 
Anyways, all you guys are doing at this point, which I feel really bad for all of you, is um, if you're a Democrat, at least, I feel bad for your future because what you guys did was piss off a man, try to ruin his life, come for his 10-year-old daughter, let, let that sink in, and come for his fucking wife. You're pissed off this man who is now going to be your Supreme Court. He's young for at least the next 40 years. Happy now? I've never, ever been scared of the Republican Party. I maybe not have used to agree with them because of what I was told by the Democrats who were the ones telling me things. I've gotten older and I've researched myself and now I realize why the Democratic Party says bullshit since then. But I'm terrified of the Democrats ever getting in office again. Watching them use their own people as ammo has been so eye-opening, scary, and sad. Watching these women in handcuffs be paraded to jails from protesting outside the Kavanaugh hearing, crying, flipping off cameras, screaming, being really upset, makes me even sadder. The thought of what you guys have done to the women in America over this made me even fucking sadder. Like I said earlier, how many women have relapsed? We'll never know. How many women had to revisit their past that they never wanted to tell anybody? We'll never know. How many women committed suicide over this? We'll never know. That's sad. I think it's sick that you would use your own supporters as ammo. And that is why I'll never vote Democrat again. And that is why I, th I urge all of you to vote red this midterms. Why? We may have a shitty little group called the religious-based Republicans, that's 2% of us. But in the end, if that doesn't scare you, that your own party is going to use you and your hardships in your life as ammo against the American people, then you, my friend, should be a bullet. You should be ammo. Because clearly you're not worth much to yourself. And I think that all of you should have a little bit more self-respect, self-love, and love your insecurities, love the things that make you you. And if you went through something bad in your life, like being um, racially like targeted, being um, sexually char targeted, being told you can't do something because you're a woman, being told you can't do something because you're a feminine man or because you're gay, just know your party uses those things not for you, against you. They just tell you it's for you. But what good has it done? It's clearly made such a divide in this country, it's tearing us apart. And don't forget, women, blacks, gays, minorities, we all have been fighting for equality, not for more recognition than the other group, for equality. The Democrats have you guys on a wild goose chase to see who could be the best. But I'm telling you guys all right now that all of you are the best. We're all in this together. And we could end all of the separations, we could end all of the hate, just simply wake up and realize it may not be Democrats who are bad people, but your leaders sure are not good people. Are not good people at all. To them, all women meant one woman, Ford. And occasionally two women, Clinton. But the, to the hundreds of women that got arrested outside of the Kavanaugh hearing, they didn't give a fuck about, they didn't care about. The women marching in DC who were touched by their dads, their uncles, a babysitter, somebody at a park, to girls who were capt held captive against their will, to little girls who were babies being fucking raped and tortured that were marching in DC. Those victims, the real victims, you made them relive these horrible memories and what are you gonna do to help clean it up? I'll wait. In fact, I don't have to wait because we already know the answer to that, nothing. You're going to wait for Donald Trump to speak about another group and you're going to go and hold up a sign for them and forget about women altogether. Just like you did blacks, just like you did gays, and just like you did children. It's sad. It's pathetic. And I, for one, can say as a gay person, I thought you were going to be there for me. I really, really believed you. But you lied. And for that, I do urge everybody watching this to vote red this midterms. My birthday is November 7th, which is weird because November 6th is the day we are is it like election day but do you guys want to know another fun fact I was born on election day <laughs> 1988 anyways 
that means nothing to what's going on right now. But I'm <laughs> um, so you guys know that you guys should vote red. And if you are um, blue party or if you are green party, I urge you, urge you, urge you to vote red. You guys can keep on doing this oh vote third party thing until you guys get enough people in your party. Please just go towards. It's gonna be our Republican or Democrat. And I hate to say it, like I gotta hate to say that, but it's a fact. The percentages on third party are so low that it's like a joke at this point. And I feel like. We need you guys. We really need you guys. This midterms, and we really need you guys this 2020. Not for Trump, for the Republican Party. For the old people walked away from the left to the right. For the people that um, maybe don't truly really agree with all the Republican views, but have nowhere else to go, so they went red. Because they just simply went away from the evil of the left. Those people. We need you. And what I'm realizing is all of us that have walked away, we're transforming the Republican Party. If you're a Republican right now watching this and you're like one of those right-winged, right, 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 right-winged and saying that, if you think that people cannot be part of the Republican Party who are different, who are not white, bitch, we're in here now. Hi. Yeah, that's right. We came to your house and we're transforming it. It's a little bit more all-inclusive. Don't worry. It's still moralistic and it's still for our constitution. But hi, we're going to be a part of it. And um, to all of you who are scared to go Republican because your friends are um, going to hate you and stuff like that, hashtag me too. <laughs> I've been there. So um, once more of you guys come out of that little Republican closet, I won't have to be so alone. And hey, I'm already here, so you won't have to be alone either. So let's move on to the next subject at hand. The next thing I wanted to talk about is... Dun, 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 the gays! Okay, so the gays always kind of hate me because I always say the truth and they get really mad at it when I point out things like it's kind of stupid to boycott a chicken place after six years but not boycott Google who is helping Indonesia kill gay people. It's kind of stupid to boycott chicken after six years but not boycott Google after they still left all the gay sites in Chechnya getting people killed. Anyway, so they hate things like that. So let's go over another thing that they hate. Another thing that they're doing and ignoring. Why is all the gay people going to come forward and be like, Mike Pence is speaking at the fucking anti-gay, um, what is it, what is it called? He's, it's the anti-gay, um, luncheon or whatever it's called. What is it? It's a, um, come on, touch my tongue. Convention. Okay, so they have an anti-LGBT convention. Cute. They're allowed to. Guess what? Don't be surprised. They've had it every single year. They always have. They're allowed to. Why? Because in America, you can believe what you want. And you can even form groups about it, and you can even have speakers come to it. And Mike Pence is not going to take away your rights. This is not a, a meeting for an executive order. This is not a meeting with Congress. This is not a new law thing. This is a fucking convention who, like the Equality Convention, who had Lady Gaga speak. Why did Lady Gaga speak at the Equality Convention? She's not gay. Oh, yeah, because we made her the face of it. We also left, left, meaning all left. You guys made Mike Pence the face of anti-LGBT, correct? Did you not? Did you not? You did. So when they have an anti-LGBT festival, if you will, <laughs> which they've had every single year, so don't complain about them having it this year, finally, and they have him speak at it, doesn't mean you guys have to keep posting what you guys are posting, like, I'm scared. My LGBT friends, I'm going to pray for them. But what the fuck? You made him the face of it. They need a famous person who's the face of it to come and speak at their fucking convention. So they picked Mike Pence. Oh well. You already knew he was anti-LGBT. Why are you surprised that you're finding out something you already knew? And he's allowed to be anti-LGBT. Mike Pence, be anti-LGBT. I support you. Until you make a law about it, bitch, I ain't got shit to say. You know what I'm saying? Like, that light is too damn bright. But if he makes a law taking away gay marriage or something, which not going to happen, then I'll talk. So all you gay people out there who say, I'm scared, I'm scared, my pants, oh my god, I'm scared. Shut the fuck up. Put your panties back on. I'll take them back off, whatever you sluts do. But just know, Mike Pence ain't coming for you. He's speaking at a convention because he is the face of this anti-LGBT movement because of you making him the face of the anti-LGBT movement. So... Give yourselves a standing ovation and be proud of yourselves, gays, because you did this. You did this. And don't be scared. It's a convention, bitch. They're allowed to have them. 
There's a My Little Pony convention, bitch. I went to it. I took my, I took this little boy there. My friend with autism. I took Nick to the fucking My Little Pony convention. We dressed like ponies, and it was great. So they can have a fucking convention about whatever they want. They're not meeting secretly to plan a plot to destroy the gay community. It's not like that, bitch. Calm down. Calm down. Calm down. This is another one of the things where your party is trying to get you all up in your feelings so that you would vote for them. <laughs> it's called Dirty Tactics from the Democratic Party. Hashtag liberal logic. So you, anybody who's scared of what's going on, I think is fucking stupid. Like, he's allowed to go wherever he wants. He can speak wherever the fuck he wants. He's human. And he doesn't have to support me being gay. Until he takes away my rights, I got shit to say about it. Because so far, what he's doing for me is the same thing he's doing for straight people and everybody else. He's making sure that our jobs are secure. He's making sure that we have great financial stability. He's making sure that we have great foreign relations. And he's doing amazing with this country. So I say, Mike Pence, thank you. You don't have to like me sucking dick. But thank you for simply making sure that I can stay employed. My taxes will be fine. That my health care is okay. And you are not going to take away my right to get married. Thank you. So go ahead. Speak at whatever convention you want now. Go ahead. I'm not mad at you. You don't have to like the gays. I mean, I don't like straight Christians. But you don't hear me hating on them. I support them. Why? Because you're allowed to believe whatever you want in this country. So, let's get back to what the video was going to be about. The gay media won't call out Saturday Night Live's gay shaming. So Saturday Night Live was making fun of, of course, the Kavanaugh hearing. That's why we segued into this. And they made fun of it by having... Um, a actor act like Leslie, um, the, the senator, and they had him say, Queen, you already know. Basically demeaning him as a gay person and using gay as a demeaning term. And the gay media say silence. They don't say anything. But you all want to talk about Mike Pence and where he's going to talk, bitch. Bitch. I, I, I don't get it. Like, Okay, I understand why you all ignored Google for being anti-gay. What? I understand why you guys ignored Google for being anti-gay when what they did with Indonesia, but and not ignoring Chick-fil-A. Okay, I don't understand either. But what I will say, hi. What I will say is it's kind of fucking crazy to me. You guys are gonna ignore Saturday Night Live altogether because this whole Kavanaugh case is huge, and you guys are literally keeping your mouths quiet. But speaking of Saturday Night Live and the silent gays. Let's talk about what they are talking about with Saturday Night Live. They're talking about the whole Kanye West situation. I think Kanye West is doing great. He's done more for the black community than um, I think Obama's ever done. And um, that is not me hating. That is me telling the truth. Because what Kanye West is doing right now is amazing. Not only did he get up on stage and talk crazy. That's not <laughs> the amazing thing he did. The amazing thing he did is he's building right now as we speak. It's already in construction. It's happening. He has two factories being built. One in um, the ghetto of LA. And another one that's happening in the ghetto of Chicago. I used to call these places ghetto because that's what they are and that's what they're called. So um, let's not be political correct. So he's building these factories where he's going to have people of the community in those communities um, working there and making his clothes. And um, I think that's amazing. It's going to give a lot of jobs to a lot of people and it's giving them a lot of hope. It's getting his name back to being good with the black community. And he's giving back to the country. So next time you want to watch him and think he's kind of crazy because he wears simply a red hat, or before you want to bully him and tell him to take it off before he goes onto your show, maybe you want, might want to look into things he's actually saying. Maybe you want, might want to look into this whole plantation thing. Somebody said it the best, I think, on the Walk Away campaign on page. I heard somebody say um, the rainbow plantation, quote unquote, for the whole like how gays are like ostracizing all of us other gays who are Republican and blah, blah, blah. I think it fits completely. And after it was told to me in that way, the rainbow plantation, I went back and watched Kanye West again on TMZ and re-listen to what he said. Suddenly it wasn't so crazy. Suddenly it all fucking made sense. But it's something we are too afraid to say together. We're afraid to say the word black and the word plantation in the same sentence. I get it, I get what America has done to us, but again, that is your party doing your party's best at making your party victims and using you as ammo. So. I feel bad for any person of color who has been mistreated because of that reason. I feel bad for any white person who's been mistreated because of that reason. I feel bad for anybody who's been mistreated for something about themselves that they cannot change, like their skin color, their race, their sex. And what Kanye West is doing is um, amazing things. And he's really helping a lot of people in this country. And I think it goes, like, 
it goes without saying that we should be thanking him as opposed to hating on him and making fun of him. I think it's great that people like Saturday Night Live can make fun of things that are serious in the media, and that those things are great. Um, I don't, I don't hate the fact that they made fun of gays um, with their Kavanaugh skit, but I know that the gays, knowing how they are, shouldn't they be a little bit pissed off? At like the fuck, like what? Why aren't they a little bit pissed off? Like just a little bit, a little bit. Oh yeah, because it's Democrats who are making fun of gay people. So in the end, this whole entire country's situation doesn't come down to gay people, black people, women, men. It doesn't come down to all these little small subgroups that we're confusing you with. What it's coming down to is two things, Democrat and Republican. Fight like normal Americans should be fighting. Take it to the polls, guys. This, this craziness that you guys are doing is nuts. And I used to make my videos and say this. Two weeks ago, I used to say, both sides, calm it down. But right now, I'm just going to say... Democrats, calm it the fuck down. This is going too far. Like, you have gone above and beyond to hurt your own people, have a couple of hundred of them arrested. Who knows how many suicides have happened because these women have revisited their past? Who knows how many women have relapsed? Who knows how many women have ended up in horrible places because you made them relive their tragic, true stories of sexual misconduct? All the while, you guys say this in the name of femininity, Speaking of which, isn't it funny how femininity, for your feminists, you guys ignore the biggest victims within femininity, and that's male, males who are feminine? I think it's really crazy. That's, again, that's another video, another day. But that's kind of crazy, something for you to think about, because I, I realize that um, men who are feminine still get picked on on both sides, hence why you guys used this skit for Saturday Night Live to make fun of Leslie, the senator, and call him gay. Because he's a little feminine. Yes, even straight men are feminine. And these are the men who are made fun of the most for it. By everybody. As you guys can see, by the left. And they're making fun of Leslie, the senator, for being a little feminine. And I think that if you're a feminist, you should, think of, you should stand up for all things feminine, correct? Why are we so ignored? And why do you use us as tactics when you want to make fun of somebody on your show, Saturday Night Live. You're supposed to be Democrats. Aren't you guys supposed to be all-inclusive? Just saying, just think about it. But I wanted to show you guys a video real quick of Kanye West because it's really fucking hilarious. And um, we'll show you the ones first on Saturday Night Live and I'll show you the other video he just made as he was leaving the show. And both times, really listen to what he's saying. Get out of your head that he's crazy and just really listen to what he's saying. Because when I thought he was crazy and I watched him on Saturday Night um, I watched him on TMZ, I was like, stop talking. I was like, you're going to make us look bad. But no, like I said, I went back and revisited it, and I really paid attention, and he really has a lot of good points. So let's go ahead and watch this video. One person clapping. If I was concerned about racism, I would have moved out of America a long time ago. We don't just make that... Oh no! Alexa! Sorry, that my Alexa's retarded. Because Alexa listened to Kanye West and put on his music. So, <laughs> that was crazy. Let's just turn this off. See, she's talking about Kanye West. Shut up, Alexa, you're dumb. Sorry about the sound, but I can't play it on Lex anymore. Rappers, musicians, so it's easy 
Yes, man. I love me too. <laughs> okay, so first of all, when I want you guys to know, when um, I saw an interview with him recently where he was on TMZ and they were telling him to take off the hat. Before he walked out on stage for this exact performance, they tried to tell him to take off the hat. And that's another thing, that's a whole other issue I get when you're trying to tell somebody they can't look a certain way or dress a certain way or be themselves or express themselves. That's a whole other issue and that I have really close ties with. But at the same time, I think it's crazy to me that he came out to do a performance and they tried to tell him not to wear the hat. Like why? Like why? Like in the grand scheme of things, all it's going to do is get your show more views because people are going to be like, what the fuck, why do you have a Republican on your show? But, and Kanye West at that. So if anything, you should be using that to get more money if you're really as greedy and stupid as you seem. But um, I think that it's crazy that they would all try to tell him to take off the hat. And I think that's just the left and their ploy and their whole entire, um, their whole game of what they want to appear to look like. And they want to appear to be the ones who got Kanye to take off the hat. They want to appear to be the ones who got him to stop doing something. They want to be the first ones that you could say, we kicked him out of here because he was wearing a red hat. And I think that that's crazy to me because all you're trying to do, again, brings us back to the first point, you're just trying to get everybody all up in their feelings and you're trying to get everybody to revisit their horrible situations and use that as ammo against the Republican Party. And I think that's incredibly gross. I think it's very childish and I think it's very dirty. I think that there are a lot of people in this country who have been through things like racism, sexism, sexual misconduct, homophobia. We have real issues out here. And for all of you to think that it's okay to use our issues and our horrible situations for your political gain is completely fucking stupid. And I, I can't stand by and be quiet about it. And I may not have a big platform, but the platform I do have I will always use to say the truth because that's, that's wrong. And although the people that got arrested outside the Kavanaugh hearing are Democrats, although the people that you're getting to march and act fools are Democrats, I still love people. And they are still human. They have no reasons to march, no reasons to be mad at the Republican Party except for what you're telling them and except for what you're getting them to do. And that's revisit their past of very, very, very scary, horrible things. And again, how many people throughout all this have relapsed on drugs? How many people have committed suicide? How many people have gone into deep depressions about these situations? And then you guys want to blame guns instead of mental health. But you are incit you're inciting more mental health problems. It's sick. It's disgusting. You're pinning women against men, gays against straights, blacks against whites. It's disgusting. And for all of you out there that are Democrat, that are listening to this and watching this now, just I want you to remember what it is that we are fighting for. And I was a Democrat, I was a proud liberal who stood up for equality and everybody being able to have equal opportunity. And I think that you guys should all really rethink what the hell that means and rethink what the hell you were actually fighting for in the beginning because I think a lot of you have been in this cloud and got really, really distracted on what the real meaning of fighting for equality was. And I want you to know my stance has not changed. My party did. So you guys all need to wake the fuck up and come to. But this is the last video. I'm going to just put on the one last one and like I'd like to end all my videos on a really happy note. So we're going to play this last Kanye West video. So we're here as an extension of what President no, said, you're going to be one of the best makers of jobs. I'm here on that same uh, mission. I'm, and so we're here as an extension of what President said, you're going to be one of the best makers of jobs. I'm here on that same uh, mission. I'm, I got that same vision. We're going to make jobs. And you know we can make cold clothes that kids yeah, yeah. want. You know, I'm the coldest designer. Yes, I mean, this. What about the pastel? Are you going to come back with the pastel? Or are you done with pastel? And that, that, um, I don't. Yes. We don't pastel. Yes. 
to be made in Crenshaw. That's a beautiful thing, man, and I know the community and everybody is very thankful for it, for, for using your, you know, power and money and influence to, to give back to the community. That's great, man. I, if, 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 I liked it when you went back to Chicago, and it just seemed like your a lot of your demeanor changed. It, 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 it like, it, I don't know, man, it just... I want a beer. Hey, but um, I think it's pretty awesome that Kanye West is going out of his way to do that, and he's giving jobs to a lot of people in those communities, as opposed to just promising jobs and not doing anything. And um, I think that that alone is doing more for the black community than Obama ever did. So I'm not trying to bring up Obama, I get it, don't bring up the past, whatever. But at the same time, it's facts. And I think that it's something that should be noted, because this is somebody who has been deemed as crazy, and somebody who's been deemed to be um, a, a burden on the black community, somebody who has been deemed to not help out in the black community. But don't forget the Donda's house. Don't forget Donda's house. His mother's name is Donda's, and they made a Donda's house in Chicago that helps kids get off the streets and then quit gangs. So he um, still keeps the Donda's house alive, even though his mother's dead. And um, he now is creating a factory in Chicago and a factory um, on Crenshaw Boulevard. Like, what the f Helping the people of those communities. So I think that that's notable, and I don't give a fuck if you're Republican or Democrat. It doesn't matter. At this point, you've got to admit that's notable, and that's really fucking admirable. He's giving jobs to people who never believe that they can get jobs before. And black America is going to listen to a black man before they do a white man with money. So if, a white man, if Trump says, oh, I'll give you guys jobs, a lot of them aren't really going towards them. And I get that, but at the same time, unemployment's doing so well. So they are going towards them in other states, but in California and Chicago, those two places, they're not really going for him. But here's Kanye West, who is speaking the same exact language, but just because of the color of his skin, they listen a little bit better. But I think that's just the people like people that they can relate to. So I definitely think that's why that's happening. But I think Kanye West is doing really great things for the country and a whole, as a whole. Even though he's only putting two factories, one in Chicago, one in L.A., I think it's still doing huge for these communities. And especially these most left-leaning communities. And let's be real. Bitch, I, Yeezy, did you guys like those shoes? Because <laughs> I, I did. I never got them, though. <laughs> but we'll be getting some Kanye West gear now. To say made in China anymore, Kanye. But um, so that's what I want to end the video with. So I wanted to go on and just talk about that and say congrats to Kavanaugh. Um, I'm saying congrats early. I get it. They haven't even announced it yet. But let's be real. We knew since the beginning Kavanaugh is going to be confirmed anyways. So um, I just wanted to laugh about the fact that the seventh investigation. Why? For, why are you guys shocked that the seventh investigation came up empty-handed? Like, do you think of the third or fourth or fifth? Bitch, seven. Like seven, like the fuck, and now it ain't good enough. Now it ain't good enough. Like, sit the fuck down, and take it to the polls like every real American, and stop hating on people who wear different clothes than you, bitch. If you wear a fucking Make America Great Again shirt, so fucking what? If you wear a fucking Trump is not my president shirt, so fucking what? People can express themselves on shirts, on bumper stickers, where it belongs. Stop fucking hating people. Stop judging people for what they look like, and um, sit down and remember your morals. Okay. But that's it, guys. My friends here, so I'm gonna go get drunk. Bye.